Artificial intelligence isn't usually the first thing that comes to mind when thinking about farming. But today, with global warming underway, farmers are reaching for new technologies to stay ahead of a shifting climate. Today, in our Sunday special report, we head down to Kaohsiung to visit Yongling Farm, a high-tech pioneer. Join us as we see how they've incorporated smart tech to optimize operations. At this farm, everything from growing to harvesting and even marketing is supported by advanced technology. Li Mingtang, a consultant at Yongling Farm, carefully inspects each leaf. If he discovers a disease or pest, he photographs it and uploads it to the farm's smart agriculture management platform, informing the farm's phytopathologist. This smart platform was designed by Yongling Farm and it's its pride and joy. In recent years, farmers have increasingly turned to smart technology to cope with extreme weather brought by global warming. Farming was once about watching the skies, it's now about integrating AI. In Taiwan, heat stress is a major problem. Second to that is the water supply issue, followed by the accumulation of salts. Detection systems are a huge help. You don't need to dig up plants and send them to the school for testing. You can get clear information from the sensors. Here in the farm's experimental orchard, these passion fruits are different from those grown traditionally. These fruits are grown away from the soil to prevent their water source from becoming a medium for disease transmission. Aside from this, the orchard is equipped with sensors to monitor growth. The main purpose of this device is to monitor the plants in a greenhouse and collect their EC and pH levels, as well as the moisture levels in the soil. It transmits the data directly to the smart platform. The next time I plant seedlings, I can adjust the fertilizer content based on the data it collects. Soil, temperature, moisture, through this small sensor and the data lines connected to it, all of these things can be measured and graphed on the computer. The upgraded version can even be integrated with hardware on the farm. Once levels reach a specified measurement, the system will automatically activate fans and sprinklers. These days in Taiwan, we basically don't have a fall season like we used to, and winters don't really get cold. Spring, on the other hand, just like spring this year, has become cooler. So the whole of the seasons is unlike the way they were in the past. If I use some technological farming equipment, it can help me to record environmental conditions over the course of the year. When I look back at the year, I can run analyses based on this data. Liu Weiping, who studied agriculture, said that very few of his classmates ended up working in the industry. But Liu himself takes delight in the hardships of farming. To me, harvesting the passion fruit is relatively interesting. It's easier than harvesting vegetables in a greenhouse. Each passion fruit I pick fills me with a sense of accomplishment. Before each passion fruit reaches the hands of a consumer, it goes through one food safety check after another. Liu carries infected fruit samples to the farm's research center. This is one of the few organic microorganism laboratories in the country. The lab conducts rigorous testing on the fruit and vegetables brought there. After all, as the largest organic farm in the country, Yongling Farm grows over 300 types of produce annually. From food safety to production and marketing, at no step of the way can it afford to be careless. From sprouting to harvest, these vegetables take 45 days to produce. Before they can be packaged, they must undergo pressure cooling, which slows their aging process and extends the shelf life to 7 or 8 days. Before packages are shipped off, they are graded and separated by quality. After the vegetables are taken out of the cooling process, we still need to put them through a beauty contest. After that beauty contest, they end up in front of the consumer, and when the consumer is choosing a package, they get that feeling like, wow, this one is mine. In the 16-degree temperature packaging room, roughly a dozen people are working away. 
After manual separation, the best vegetables are sent to an automatic packaging machine. A sticker with production information is affixed, and the packages are boxed up to be shipped off to market. Low-grade vegetables are not to be wasted. After being cut up and roasted, they are added to brown rice and put through a machine, which turns the mixture into rice crackers, adding value to the farm's produce. Normally, a package of vegetables can be sold for only 40 or 50 NT. Through additional processing, one gram can go for 60 or 70 NT, irrespective of price fluctuations. Agriculture is a first-grade industry. It is the first step in putting food on the table. If we add value to it, for example, by changing the way the produce tastes, then it can be fully integrated into daily life. Eleven years ago, a charitable foundation established Yongling Farm in Kaohsiung Shanlin Township. In the wake of Typhoon Morakot, the farm offered steady work to storm victims so that they could make a living and potentially become entrepreneurs. It also encouraged youth to join its cooperative so that they could become partners of the farm. They can use the equipment, technologies and systems that we established. We also help them establish various sales channels. Under this cooperative, the farmers help each other out. Chiu Chui Xun, 25, joined the Youth Agricultural Cooperative last year. Under the guidance of an experienced agricultural consultant, he has successfully cultivated the rarely grown yellow dragon fruit. For instance, I might not be able to find any help to hire, I might be on my own. These technologies can help me with a lot of things. A small-scale farmer doesn't have a lot of financial resources. Say that I want to work only a small plot, it wouldn't make financial sense to invest in all this equipment. But in terms of capital, the cooperative is able to purchase things in large quantities so they can pressure the seller for a lower price. To fight alone means to have no resources and to be without the latest information. It's very hard to do business like that. When there's an organization like this, older farmers can pass on their skills and experience. What younger farmers lack most are resources and experience. Through the sharing of resources, the cooperative makes it easier for prospective farmers to get started. Then, after that hurdle is cleared, it helps them sell their produce. The cooperative can bring the produce of many farmers together and leverage this when talking to buyers. They can say, I've got this much product. It makes the buyer more willing to talk. Small-scale farmers only have a bit of product. It's hard to find sales channels on their own. If produce is to be sold at a good price, farmers need to have a production plan. They need to look at the needs of the market and then decide what to plant, how much to plant and how long to grow it. This way, they can avoid the price fluctuations that come from an imbalance in supply and demand. In the past, agricultural products went from the producer to the distributor, the wholesaler, which would get it to the consumer. But organic produce is a special market. It isn't impacted by price fluctuations. It's a fixed price. So if your product is good enough and your brand strong enough, that's enough for the customer. You don't need to deal with all the middlemen or any of the costs associated with them. Tech-powered farming is changing the landscape of agriculture. It's also drawing more and more young people to the industry. We hope to help farmers become their own bosses, because if they are employees, then they only have a fixed income. No matter how hard they worked, no matter how meticulously they cared for their crops, their income was always limited. However, under the cooperative, farmers are a group. They can see the results of their hard work and receive a proportionately higher income. Farming is hard work, but for this new generation of farmers, the moment of the harvest makes it all worth it. In this line of work, you need to be out in the sun, and you sweat quite a lot. Compared with other types of work, it is really quite tiring. However, when I see the crops I planted growing well, I really have a sense of success. Organic farming is at the mercy of nature. To eke out a living from the land, farmers must break out of the mold of traditional farming and turn Taiwan's agricultural industry on its head.